are signature moments in everyone's life. They reveal who we really are and shape who we become. So tonight we ask, who are you? We see a leader who remodels, not rebuilds. A defensive hammer, a boom, a relentless battering of opponents' will. And we wonder, is this the start of a new dynasty or the end of a remarkable run? see evolution and something to believe in. The speed, the athleticism, and the customary swagger. And we wonder, are you the you? Or merely a reflection of the past? Resurgent, but not yet returned. Touchdown Miami! Give that man the turnover chain. Tains in fire! Tonight, show us who you are, or lose, and let others define you. This is the moment for a revelation. So, who are you? Perfect football weather in the Queen City of Charlotte to crown the kings of the ACC and punch a ticket to the college football playoff. Welcome to the 2017 Dr. Pepper ACC football championship game between the seventh-ranked Miami Hurricanes and the top-ranked Clemson Tigers, part of Dr. Pepper championship week. Now, the Clemson faithful believe that the brighter the lights, the better the stage, the better their Tigers will play. But fans of the resilient, hungry Hurricanes have traveled north in big numbers. Miami has stepped away from its first conference title in 14 years. And welcome, Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet. We are so pleased that you've chosen to cap this championship Saturday right here with us. Already today, Kirk, we've seen Oklahoma route TCU for the second time in a month. The Sooners, an imposing performance to punch their ticket. Georgia rolled through Auburn. They'll jump into the top four. Your takeaway from those first two games. First of all, Oklahoma, how, how good is that offense led by Baker Mayfield? And and we wondered how Georgia and Auburn would be second time around. And, and the way they came out on a neutral field just dominated the football game. I really think there's a great chance these two teams could end up matching up out in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. We'll see what happens. And for Clemson, the mission is clear. Win, top seed, head to the Superdome for their semifinal on New Year's night. Any doubt in your mind that if Miami wins, they, they don't jump from seven? into the playoff? It's just my opinion. It's very subjective. Everybody has an opinion. I think the winner of this game is in, whether it's Miami or Clemson, which means there's a lot at stake for both teams, not just the Tigers. Miami, a double-digit underdog. You can feel that energy on the field from them. Clemson, meanwhile, old hat these postseason games. Deshaun Watson, Kirk, we watched the last couple of years. He just took the Tigers' offense on his back and carried them. Look at those total touchdowns in the postseason. Now, Kelly Bryant, doesn't have to match those numbers or bring the fire that Deshaun did. What does he have to do, though, tonight? Just beat Kelly Bryant. Remember in spring ball, that's what Dabo Sweeney told him. Quit trying to beat Deshaun Watson. Beat Kelly Bryant. And Kelly Bryant fits into this offense. It's different. It's a lot more quarterback run. And they look at the numbers. When it's at an advantage quarterback run, eight here against seven, you're going to take it. And he's very effective. He'll have to do that tonight against his very athletic Miami defense. RPOs, run pass option. He sees soft coverage. He's going to get the ball out to his receiver especially Hunter Renfro, let them pick up five yards, eight yards, or in this case, a huge play. And look for a little wrinkle. T. Higgins, usually an X, into the boundary with his size at 6'4". They've moved him into the slot to get him the ball downfield a little bit more. And this is interesting. You look at Kelly Bryant. You compare what he did with Deshaun Watson. 89% of his passes are thrown to the perimeter, to the left and to the right. So if you're Manny Diaz, Defensive coordinator for Miami, you got to come in with a very confident secondary and you say, hey guys, let's make him uncomfortable. Let's make him throw into the teeth of our defense. We can't give him these easy throws. We'll see if it works. Yeah, Kane's number one defense in tackles for loss. They've won the turnover battle nine games in a row, and that now famous turnover chain has been out 29 times this season. It's been fun to watch, and you and I had the Virginia Tech in the Notre Dame game. Could have been two of their best games. They played with such energy, and, and I really think tonight it's going to take that kind of effort, that kind of energy. You made a great point. On the field, you and I are fortunate enough to get down there before we came up, and you could just feel that passion and that chip on their shoulder. They've got to play like that for 60 minutes. And Jaquan Johnson is the leaderboard of the turnover chain, a takeaway in six games in a row. He is a big part of that. 53 degrees, a beautiful evening here in Charlotte. Tigers and the Hurricanes about to get it on. Maria Taylor's with the newly named ACC Coach of the Year, Mark Ricks. 
All right, Coach, you've led your team to their first trip to an ACC championship, and now you're 60 minutes away from the title. What was the last message you wanted your team to hear before taking the field? Just play hard. Just, you know, they got us here. We might as well win since we got here, you know. We didn't come this far just to get this far. I know Clemson feels the same way. Thanks for your time, Coach. Now let's go over to Clemson sideline with Tom Rinaldi. Maria, thank you very much. Dabo, I know you take nothing for granted, but you got this team back in this championship. How do you best use that experience tonight? Well, I think both teams just have to use the experience we've had all year. We've both been in big games all year. Just uh, we got to just take it one play at a time. It's championship football, but it's a blessing to be here. Really proud of this team. Enjoy it. I know you will. We will. Thank you, Chris. All right, Tom Dabo off his 100th victory at Clemson, one of the fastest in FBS history to get there. Miami won the toss and deferred, so Clemson will get the football first. And Michael Badgley, the kicker, the only All ACC first teamer on this. Coastal Division champion team. That has raised some eyebrows. Further motivation for Miami. Travis Etienne, the speedy true freshman, back deep for the Tigers. Here we go. It's a short kick. Etienne from the nine. And blazing freshman able to create some space. And Kelly Bryant and the Tigers offense. Kirk start from the 33. Well, Kelly Bryant's been a great fit this year. Does it differently as we talked about in the open. Look at his size. 6'4", 220 pounds. Third year in the system. The last two years he backed up to Sean. Number one, protect the football. They've done such a good job of that all year. He's got to be a factor tonight in the ability to run the football. And then when he gets matchups on the outside, and he's going to get them because they're going to see a lot of man-to-man, -man, he's got to throw accurate balls downfield to give his receivers a chance. Bryant 12 and 1 as a starting quarterback. Two back look with Ray Ray McLeod and Tavian Feaster, who now motions to the edge. Bryant, screen, Renfro, the reliable slot receiver, picks up about four. Here's tonight's Chick fil A impact players. Wait, when you look for. Impact players here looking at this Clemson offense. There are a lot of them. We'll talk about the running backs, ETN, number nine. Hunter Renfro have his hands on the ball. R.J. McIntosh in the inside has got to play well for Miami. And Jaquan Johnson, the safety. Off the play action, Bryant keeps it, but the Canes are right there to wrap him up. It's number 99, Joe Jackson off the edge. A big part of defending this offense is keeping the edge. Great job right here. And you also see the speed of the Miami defense. Both defensive ends do a nice job. Chad Thomas right there keeping the edge. And how about Joe Jackson from the backside? How quickly he's there to help out. Miami crowd making some noise. If you didn't think that the Hurricanes fans travel, you were wrong. They need six on third down. Haynes bail out. Brian has time and delivers a strike to Renfro. Such a clutch weapon on third down. Move the sticks to midfield. Yeah, they're going to go fast here after a first down. What an exceptional job by Kelly Bryant. First chance at third and medium. How's he going to do? Manny Diaz was convinced we've got to mix up the looks. Try to confuse this quarterback. And the first time they show blitz and back out, and he's able to, uh, his receivers there, able to just sit in that soft spot in the zone. Jet sweep motion. Hand off to Ray Ray McLeod, and he's shut down after a one-yard gain. Clemson so intent on getting to the perimeter with the run game. Yeah, that's their game. I mean, they, they stretch you horizontally and vertically, and then they mix in quarterback run, and of course, that with their talented backs and Feaster and ETN. It, it gives you a lot to deal with the way this offense takes advantage of the entire field. Saw so Jeff Scott, co-offensive coordinator with Tony Elliott. Bryant looks left and delivers a strike. It's a short game. Deion Kane making a catch in his 36th consecutive game. It'll be third and short. Nick Saban was on game day this morning. He was talking about defending Auburn's offense. And, and Auburn's offense and the Clemson offense are from the same family tree. And he said they had 232 pages of formations and personnel <laughs> groupings. He said it really oh forces my. you to simplify. Otherwise, you're, you're thinking too much. You just have to play fast. On third and two in that jet sweep motion. Again, they hand it off to Ray Ray McLeod. Long way to run, but he does pick up the first down before Derek Smith, a backup safety, forced him out. Yeah, it's a good effort here by Redwine. 
but the block just enough right here by Feaster. Watch him lead the way. Redwine, the safety, comes up. He tries to keep his outside shoulder and hand free, but Feaster got just enough of him to affect him. Play action, some pressure, back throw. Renfro, his third catch already, and the Tigers are set up in the red zone. And, and that's the other thing they do is they get you thinking about jet sweep. They get you thinking about the short, quick throws, and then your eyes start to get caught up in that backfield, and then they'll sneak somebody down the crease in the seam, and this time it's Hunter Renfro. He gets 23 yards. And again, a quarterback keeper on first down. Kelly Bryant spins and twists down inside the 10. How about this drive right now from Clemson? This Miami defense has had a week to prepare and look at Kelly Bryant, their strengths, their potential weaknesses. They've repped it, repped it, repped it. Nothing that they've been able to look at in practice has been able to, to simulate the speed and the execution of what they're seeing right now. Second and two. Keeper again. Bryant bangs into traffic and is able to show that strength. And it'll be first and goal. This is strength on strength because the Tigers are an exceptional red zone offense. Great touchdown percentage. But the Canes are pretty stout down here themselves on D. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really a reason that they've been able to get themselves to the ACC championship. Fourth in the nation it, as far as allowing touchdowns down in this red zone. This is a different challenge tonight against Kelly Bryant and the ability to run the football with the quarterback. First appearance for Travis Etienne, the blazing fast true freshman back. He's got it, barrels ahead. Touchdown, Tigers! Beautiful execution on the opening drive. 68 yards and the champs on top quickly. Well, that was a clinic from Kelly Bryant. Talk about being in command of an offense. Some runs, some throws, some reads, a lot of good decisions all the way down the field in that 10-play drive. Alex Spence for the conversion. You're right, it's a totally different feel. Wayne Gallman was the workhorse running back for a few years here. Now they share the wealth. Number nine finds the end zone first tonight. And Clemson. Typical efficiency in the red zone. So Alex Spence to kick it away. Typically his kickoffs don't reach the end zone. Could be a chance for Jeff Thomas, the true freshman receiver and returner for Miami. And he'll take it at the three. Thomas loses the ball, but it goes out of bounds. And now here comes Malik Rozier coming off that very tough game in the loss at Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think it's important that Malik Rozier start fast. He's got to reestablish his confidence, which I, the coaches said he's had a great week coming off of a rough game where he was benched. Then I think he's got to create with his feet. He's got to be part of being able to scramble and, and being able to get away from people. And I think the most important thing that you and I saw in the Notre Dame and Virginia Tech game is he made quick decisions. He's got to be decisive tonight, whether he's running or throwing. You said it. He's a laid-back personality. He's often a slow starter. He's been that way his whole life, but he's got to change that. First down pitch, Travis Homer runs around the left side for four. He's, he's a, you like the fact that he's a chill guy, and he's a clutch guy in the fourth quarter, but can he bring the urgency early, especially down seven right away? And, and remember last week, Pitt crowded the line of scrimmage. They took, they said, well, you're not going to run the football on us. Gave Miami a ton of one-on-one -on -one opportunities downfield that they just weren't able to capitalize. They only ran for 45 yards last week, under two yards a carry. And when teams load up like that, you've got to be able to throw. And he's missing open receivers downfield. They're going to roll the pocket a lot. Rogier on second 11 throws downfield to Thomas, who can't make the catch. It was underthrown. He was wide open before Kayvon Wallace came back to join him. Yeah, there's just a mental error there from Wallace with him rolling out. Wallace rolled with him. He rolls all the way out here as the quarterback rolls to his right. Watch how he moves out of position. Now that opens up the middle of the field. He was anticipating that Jeff Thomas would work to the outside, but instead he fakes outside, goes to the post. He's all alone, and Rozier misses it. Puts the ball too much air underneath that football. Remember that missed opportunity. Miami depends on those big chunk plays. And now on third and 11, Rozier is a fine runner, steps up and kind of weaves his way right near the marker. The spot's going to be important. 
Justin Wilkins stopped him. Are they going to give him first in? Now they're going to move it back, and it's fourth down. Well, that, that was an example of being decisive, getting out of there right away. And even though it was third and long, he felt that he could pick it up by going out, and he came very close. At that time, makes a good decision. Comes up just a little bit short. Cannot have mistakes like the false start penalty against the defense this good. Zach Fiegel's coming off a rough game at Pittsburgh. He had some shanks that were important in that loss. He must play big tonight. Not a great punt. McLeod stumbled. He's trying to make the fair catch. Ball on the ground. A muff on this punt and a scrum now. Who's got it at the bottom? Trent Harris, the defensive end, number 33, comes away with it. Break out the turnover chain already. There is a flag down, however. We'll check the flag. The ball is covered by the, the kicking team during the kick. Holding number 30, receiving team. That penalty will be declined. The kicking team will keep the ball. First down. It was a short punt. McLeod came up and tried to make a fair catch on the dive and didn't handle it cleanly. Yep. The ball comes out. Miami capitalizes. And you'll you'll see that it Williams here right in the middle. He just pulls a Miami player down. There's that's the flag. But Ray Ray McLeod, who you and I have called a lot of Clemson, Clemson games over the last couple years, sometimes a risk taker, and that time it backfires. The blocker got in the way of McLeod. This is exactly what Miami's offense needs. On first down, Rogier under pressure delivers a high throw over the head of Lawrence Cager. They're going to throw a lot of balls like that tonight. Well, and Amon Richards is usually lined up in that position. Of course, the turnover chain. It's time it goes to Harris, who's down there hustling to be able to come up with that. He joins the party. That's his first time this year that the defensive end has had the chain. And right there, he goes over his own teammate, stumbles down. On second down, Rogier flips it underneath. This is Cager, the big rangey sophomore from Maryland, and it's a first down. Yeah, great shot with the play action. Gets the aggressive linebackers up into the line of scrimmage to take away Travis Homer. Love the call here on second down, and it gives these receivers. Again, we talked about Richards being out. You're going to see Lawrence Cager in there. He's 6'5". Langham will be in there at 6'4". So they lose maybe the explosiveness of Richards, but they get the size with guys like Cager and Langham. So Cager having his lower back worked on. They cannot afford another injury to a receiver. Homer to the boundary and do a lot of orange jerseys gains nothing. Leland Farrell, the defensive end, the freaky pass rusher. Pretty good run support, too. Yeah, they, they, great team speed from Clemson. And Clemson, I'm sure, looked at last week's film and said, hey, guys, let's let's try to approach this Miami offense in the same way. Let's force them to throw the football effectively and consistently to be able to beat it. So let's load up against Homer and the running threat of Rozier and take our chances holding up in man-to-man -man until, until Rozier can prove that he can throw the ball consistently. There's a run up the middle, just trying to make it third and more manageable. Without Chris Herndon, the tight end, who's such a great blocker and has 40 catches, Michael Irvin, the second. Michael Irvin's son, number 87, has got to step up and play huge tonight. And, and, and he's got great hands. He's a great receiver. The area that he's really trying to improve is, is blocking. And they say that Herndon's one of the best blocking tight ends, and Mark Rick's been around that he's been fortunate enough to have. On third down, you get the feeling Herndon would be in there. But Irvin is out. A four-receiver set. Tigers bring some pressure. Rogier rolls and fires to Braxton Berrios, who swarmed. The Tigers were ready for it, and it's a loss back near the 30. Fourth down. Van Smith combining with Farrell. Well, for an athletic defense that flies to the ball, keep in mind, they moved the launch point. Quarterback rolls right, but look here to the near side. How disciplined this Clemson defense play. Van Smith, 23. Trayvon Mullen does a good job. They fly to the ball typically, but this time they stayed home on third down, anticipating a throw to Berrios. Michael Badgley, that all ACC kicker, is a future NFL kicker, but this is a bad sign. The guy who almost never misses is wide left from 46, and the Canes don't cash in the takeaway.
against a team as good as Clemson, crucial to take advantage of your opportunities for the underdog Canes. A missed opportunity as Badgley, just his fourth miss of the season, really yanked it left from the start. The all-conference kicker is five points short of Miami's career scoring record. Can't come through, and Dabo says that turnover didn't cost us. So second possession for Kelly Bryant and the Tigers. ETN, who scored the touchdown, is the tailback. Bryant gets it to him in the flat. And ETN takes a hard hit, is slammed down by Joe Jackson. I'll tell you, Miami made a pay. He, he, he took a hard hit, but he also gave a hit for a true freshman, strong lower body, really known for his initial acceleration. Those first two or three yards when he takes off, I don't know if there are very many people in the country that can stay with him, but what's has surprised me in watching him this year for a young guy is how physical he can run. Only the fourth time he's caught a pass, not normally involved in that part of the offense, and now Bryant over the middle, slips it to Ray Ray McLeod, who makes the catch, drops the ball, and Miami unable to come up with it. It was bouncing around. Malik Young had a chance, and then Mylon Richard, the tight end, jumped on it for Clemson. Yeah, action this way. Watch the linebackers. Watch how they get outside and up again. They go fast. They get a little bit of deception, and the safeties and the linebackers are caught with their eyes in the backfield. Makes it very, very easy for Kelly Bryant when the Miami defense is out of position. And these mistakes from Miami beginning to really pile up. An opportunity to get the football back. And Young couldn't come up with it. So now, first down, ETN slips a tackle in the backfield and fights hard to get back to the line of scrimmage. Michael Pinckney, the linebacker, fast, not big, but terrific player. Part of what I think we're watching right now is just a, the big game experience, ACC championship experience. Clemson has been there and done that as a program. They played in so many big games over the last four or five years. And right now, just the shock of how big of this game this is right now is, I think, favoring the Clemson Tigers. It's a great point. ETN shows that lower body power you talked about gets down to the 20. Yeah, can Miami match Clemson's ability, Kirk, to tune out the hype and the static and just focus on what it takes to win a game like this? Absolutely. Not so far. Absolutely. I mean, I, when you play in so many big games, and this is what, what Mark Richt is building his team back to being, is it's not just X's and O's. It's being able to deal with the emotion that, that college football, you watched all day today, you watched the game last night. It's a big part of the game. And when you've been there and you've experienced it, it really allows you to play with confidence and allows you to settle in and almost welcome that energy. And third and three, Zach McLeod, one of the starting linebackers out of the game for Miami. He was helped with the sidelines. Bryant looks short. McLeod spins. Tigers first and goal. Well, they are picking on the linebackers right now in space, whether it's Zach McLeod or this time Quarterman. And Kelly Bryant is throwing the ball in rhythm. He's back, he's making quick reads, and he's distributing the football. Love the confidence to go right back to Ray Ray McLeod. Bryant seven for seven, already 104 yards. McLeod in motion again. They fake it to him. Bryant slips and he'll be dropped for a loss. A defense that does that more than any other. And it's Chad Thomas that time. Yeah, good job up front by Miami getting off the block. Well, his teammates have got to find a way to slow Clemson's momentum. Tigers with a second down end goal. Bryant straight back. Looking, now he'll take off. Shows the speed. Kelly Burr, touchdown! Two possessions, two scores for the champs. This is where you wonder with Bandy out, it forces Sheldrick Redwine into that same spot. And that's who Kelly Bryant outran to the corner of that end zone. You've got three Miami starting defenders already dealing with injury problems in this first quarter. Bandy, Zach McLeod, who had his arm taped up, went back in there. And Norton 
How about Kelly Bryant? Seven of seven in the first two drives. Five carries. Scored a touchdown. They blitz right here. Watch that, that nickelback who's a safety red line who's in for the injured bandy. Man to man. There's no one left. It's Red Wine's responsibility to be able to spy the quarterback and prevent him from getting out and doing that. That was the touchdown chain. <laughs> Air chain given to Kelly Bryant. After that, the turnover chain should have really come out for the second time on that drive. And he just knew that when Malik Young couldn't come up with that fumble, that was going to be critical. Yep. This underdog defense, which is suddenly shorthanded. Spence. Low boot and Jeff Thomas will be driven back in the end zone. It's a good kickoff. It's been an offense that has struggled to reach the end zone in the first quarter. Only four first quarter touchdowns all year, Kirk. Only one in the last eight games. DJ Dallas is the tailback now. Tigers shuffle around before the snap, and Rozier gets it out quickly to Berrios, and the North Carolina native who comes from the Raleigh area makes the play. Brent Venables. A very aggressive defensive coordinator. One of the things we're seeing here in the first few drives by Miami is a lot of pre-snap movement, trying to confuse not just the quarterback, but also affect the timing of that offensive line. We've seen a couple of false starts. I'm sure it's affecting the communication. Those offensive linemen are yelling different calls, and as that defensive line is bouncing around, it's impacting what they're trying to do up front. Rogier. Pocket collapses, and the quarterback sacks. Christian Wilkins got there in a hurry. Clemson's 41st sack of the season. Watch Christian Bro Christian Wilkins, who's one of the most talented players in the country. He uses power and quickness, and when you put him in the middle against offensive guards, it's a mismatch. Donaldson's a true freshman. It's 6'6", 350 pounds. He's going up against a mastermind. One of the best players, not just physically, but as a three-year starter, a guy that knows all the tricks. That time, he made Donaldson look like a true freshman. Nothing but future NFL players in that front four for Clemson. Third and ten. And this is where he'll really dial up the pressure. And they bring it. Rogier gets it away. High throw. Barrios could not come down with it. Surrounded by three Tiger defenders, including Isaiah Simmons. I'll tell you, what, that's a heck of an effort here to be able to get this ball off because Brent Venables, again, he's showing pressure here, here, and here. But this safety actually drops off and makes the play. Look at Simmons get back 11. He gets back not quite into the throwing lane, but gets over and knocked the ball away from Braxton Berrios. Heck of a play by the young freshman. Simmons, 6'3", those long arms, a disruptive freak in that secondary. And now on the run, Beagles gets off a terrible punt. Bounces backwards. We talked about the struggles of this true freshman. The last thing Miami needed was that, as the Tigers will take over at the 41 after a 16-yarder. Yeah, man, I see Manny Diaz out there trying to fire his team up. And, and this is the thing when you're taking on great teams like Clemson. They don't let up. They don't feel sorry for you. In fact, if anything, they, they put their foot on the accelerator. This double stack formation, Kirk. Two receivers on either side of the formation. Choice is still the back. And Bryant has a lot of time to survey the field. Now flips it over the middle. It's complete. Got down to the 15-yard line by DeAndre Overton, the sophomore from right here in North Carolina. At the end of the first quarter, the champions throwing and landing some early haymakers on top 14-0. End of one in Charlotte. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Tigers up 14-0, beginning of the second quarter of the Dr. Pepper ACC football championship game. It's the Clemson fans enjoying themselves as the Tigers are threatening the first down as we begin the second quarter. A handoff to Choice, who Sutter steps and now muscles for a huge first down gain of about nine. You, know, you get so caught up in so many different weapons that Brian has. Sometimes you forget to appreciate the offensive line. That time, Taylor Hearn, nice job leading around. And there's another back that's getting his opportunity now in Choice. You're right, very underrated offensive line. And behind that O-line, Joyce wow. barrels ahead and creates a first and goal down at the one. 
You know, Bradley Chubb, the, the fine defensive player of the year in this league, he told me by far Clemson the best O-line that he faced. And he's an authority on that. Yeah, no doubt. And you and I called the national championship last year. A lot of people made a big deal after the game about Clemson wearing down Alabama. Big part of that is they rotate so many people, they stay fresh. Choice. Snor standing up. And the Tigers are pouring it on in Charlotte. At the short field after the poor punt, only 41 yards to make it 21 nothing. That's just good, taking control of the line of scrimmage. Believing that you know, they're not going to try to get cute. They're just going to continue to pound that, that offensive line and those tight ends right into the teeth of that Miami defense and put another touchdown up on the board. Three drives, three touchdowns. And total yards in this championship game, Clemson 180. Miami 22 throughout their resilient great season Miami has done a lot to fight from behind they've been clutch they battle back but they have not been down 21 before much less to the likes of Clemson you can see the adding of the 21 onto the 58 nothing most recent meeting between these two teams the rock bottom low point in hurricane football history 2015 season after which Al Golden was fired there are a couple dozen players on both sides who were a part of that game although not really relevant Miami has improved and grown a lot since then Jeff Thomas and spark the games from the goal line Tigers knocked him down at the 20. Malik Corsier, you don't have your, your top tight end. You don't have your fastest wide receiver. You're down by three touchdowns. What can you do to gain some traction in this game? Try to get a first down and just try to stop the bleeding. And it's it's just been downhill favoring Clemson the entire game up to this point. Travis Homer is an explosive back. Cuts it down across the 25. Maria? Well, Chris, we've watched Malik Rozier play throughout the season, and before the Notre Dame game, his father had a stroke on November 6th and ended up in the hospital for an entire week. Now, he has had successful surgery to prepare a hole in his heart, and he's since returned to work, but Malik has been dealing with this the entire time as he's played throughout the end of the regular season. He said it's affected his focus some. Now that his dad is back at work, he feels better about it, and he has 85% of his strength back on his left side. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah, he did say it. finally this week he had some peace of mind. It was difficult before the Pittsburgh week with his dad going through surgery. I can only imagine. Homer knocked down a yard short. You talk about getting a first down. This becomes a very important play for an offense that struggles even on third and short. One of the worst teams in the country converting on third and short. Rogier able to sneak it, and they do move the sticks. So they do have that first habit in in the passing game which they knew they were going to have to find ways to make plays without Herndon and Richards. I think going back to your question I, I think you, you got to get stick to your game plan which means some quarterback run. You got to find matchups that you like with the big tall tight ends. Homer cuts it back. It's been tough to generate yards on the ground for Miami. He got about a half yard there. Number 45 yards rushing last week against Pitt. They knew tonight they'd have to run the ball better so far 26 yards rushing. Clemson taking that away. Going to have to throw the football with Rozier. Rozier rolls and delivers, and the catch is made by Irvin. And the tight end filling big shoes tonight. Able to stumble across to the 46. About 200, down. 6'3", 248 pounds. They say he has the best hands on the team. Nice job of catching it. Be great if he kept his feet and picked up the first down. This is sixth catch. And on third down, Homer with a quick burst up the middle. That's their best running play tonight, and they're in Clemson territory now. We've seen Clemson run some, some zone read, and this time you're going to see Miami just read. Farrell on the end stays white, wide for the quarterback. Give it to Homer, let him pick up good yards. Good side job on the left side of that offensive line. Haynes trying to employ some up-tempo. They use this rarely, but tactically. Homer just lowers the shoulder, and Kendall Joseph was there to meet him three yards down. I mean, I, Homer is a physical guy. I know Walton is, is the back that everybody talks about, but watch his collision. It's 195 pounds running into a 230-pound linebacker and put him on his back right there. That's what happens when you run low and accelerate through contact.
contact like that with Travis Homer. Kendall Joseph, the second leading tackler in the defense, knocked on his backside by the running back. We need to see Braxton Berrios start to get chances. He's in the slot up at the top. Homer trying to look for a place to cut it back, but Christian Wilkins just getting off the block again and making the play. Boy, is he beautiful? <laughs> I mean, honestly. He is so good at being able to work down the line like that. It's so hard to get wide, not just because of the speed on the edge, but watch him work inside out. He's working against that freshman. Donaldson is able to shed him, keeping his eyes in the backfield, and then comes down the line and makes a heck of a play. Donaldson is freshman. He's a four-star recruit, but he's getting baptized in a big way against uh, some dudes who'll be playing on Sunday very soon. Third and seven. Here they come. They flank at five. Rogier gets it out quickly, but it was deflected at the line, and it's fourth down. And guess who got their hand up there? The big fella again, Christian Wilkins. He is so effective at doing this. Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes in the backfield. Saw him do this so many times last year and again this year. Just an athletic guy and has such awareness to know when that ball is being released. If he doesn't get up there and knock that down, that's a first down for, for Miami. Rick probably hates to do it, but he sends out the punter. You agree with this choice not to gamble on fourth and seven? Yeah, I, I, I think you have. If you go for it, you give the ball back to Kelly Bryant, you could be down 28 nothing. Give the ball to him near midfield. It's a well-executed punt there by Fiegels down at the one with exactly one minute to play before halftime. So Clemson just careful to avoid a safety before halftime. They hand it off to Etienne in the end zone, and he's able to dart out near the five. And this is where Clemson, I'm sure, before their coaches sent their team out, it's hold on to the football. And Kelly Bryant was just in a great rhythm throwing the ball. And Miami's fortunate to stop this at 21 to nothing because it had a field of 35 nothing in the first about the end of the end of the first half. On second and six, again, Bryant has to move to get the snap. That's dangerous down there. Etienne is wrestled down by Michael Pitney, yeah. and it's third down as the Canes spend their final time out. Keeps going to the right. It's not just high; it's to the way to the right. And when you have the quickness of Etienne, I'm sure Bryant's thinking, "I got to get that ball down quickly." before ETN runs by me. Justin Falsinelli is the center and from the progressive pylon cam, you could see the traffic down in there. They had a few errant snaps this season, but pretty reliable and big fella got to be careful down there. Bryant, the safe play, the keeper tackled at the five and now the clock will run. Pinkney was there on the stop. Haynes defense begun to step up a little bit here yep. in the second quarter. Yeah, they're about a, what, one second difference there with a game clock and a play clock? Clemson could wind it down and spend a time out if they'd like to before the punt. But they, 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 the offense has got to go back to the, the drawing board and think about how they can, they're going to have to throw the ball better. To, to, the running game is just not going to be there tonight. Bryant's just got to get the ball to Etn and just get out of the end zone as the final two seconds tick down. Right, the Tigers came out, scored in their first three possessions. Did not find the end zone after that, but Kelly Bryant, who began the half 15 for 15, has run for a touchdown as well. And let's hear from Mike Rick with Maria. All right, Coach, you've seen Clemson's initial punch. What's the key to generating a spark coming out of the locker room? Well, obviously not a good start. It's uh, 21 points. That's not insurmountable. The good news is we've got another 30 minutes to play, and, and we'll get after it. What's the key to generating a rhythm offensively in the second half? Just block good, run good, throw and catch. That's, that's all it is. All right, thanks. Chris? Well, Mark Rick used the same phrase you did, Kirk, not insurmountable, but all you got to do is, is block, throw, catch, run. They haven't been able to do much of that so far in the first half against this tough Tigers defense. Get Dabo Sweeney's thoughts on the first half with Tom Rinaldi, who's working his way toward the Thompson head coach, and now he's ready. Tom? Dabo, an impressive performance in the first half. What do you most want to improve upon in the final 30 minutes? Well, we just got a little bit of a lull right there. Had an opportunity for a big play. And 
had a guy stop running right there. But, you know, hey, we had some good execution. They pinned us deep. We were able to flip the field back. Defense is playing good. You know, this is a that's a heck of a half. You know, never in a million years would I think we'd be up 21 nothing at the half. But our guys came out. They were focused, ready to play. But these guys have come back on everybody. Virginia was way up on them. Everybody's been, a lot of people have been up on them, and they have come back. They're a championship team. We're going to play great this half. I have a feeling your team's going to hear that. Go, home, Peter. For sure. I was just going to say, Todd, that is a sneak preview of what he's going to remind his team how Miami has been a good second half team, a resilient bunch. But Clemson puts its stamp on this opening half, leading by three touchdowns here in the ACC championship game. Stay tuned for the Capital One halftime report right after these messages. And welcome back to the Dr. Pepper ACC football championship game, part of Dr. Pepper championship week. Cubs and Tigers up by three touchdowns. You see a championship performance from a football program that has really, in the last three years, Kirk, built itself into competing at the highest possible level. And the faces may change, the stars move on, but... Uh, what doesn't change is Clemson knows how to play in games like this. Well, I think we saw that early. We, we talked about that in about the second series of the game. It From even from up here, you could feel that Clemson came into this game expecting to perform well. And I think Miami, especially off their first loss of the year against Pitt, they need some good things to happen to them early to get themselves to say, I told you we could do this. It's a big difference psychologically coming into the game. And now it's about Miami getting the ball here to start this second half. And as Coach talked about, score on this opening drive and you get yourself to believe you can still get in here and compete in the second half. Just 64 total yards. 27 passing yards. That's it for Malik Rogier. Jeff Thomas, a receiver who was missed a couple times in open plays in the first half, is the returner. Loses the ball. The Canes avoid disaster and pick it up there. And retain possession at the 25-yard line as E.J. Johnson was a collected. Rozier's going to have to throw the ball here to get this Miami offense going. As a first down throw, batted down at the line one more time by Christian Wilkins, who was just having a monster night. Yeah, we're so used to him playing his best in these big games. And again, I want you to focus on his eyes. The recognition, like a linebacker, peeks into the backfield. That's not an accident. When 42 knocks the ball down this often, he knows he can't get there, so he's just waiting, and waiting with his eyes on that quarterback, goes up, and again, knocks that ball down. Rogier listed at 6'1". He's not quite that tall. Mm -hmm. But Wilkins is knocking these balls down with, it, with his elbow. Homer, mm -hmm. fake to him, and Rogier takes off. It's a good fake and a nice quick run by the quarterback. You can see that he's an effective runner. That's the first time he's really gotten out tonight. Yeah, this is a midline option read. He's reading big Dexter Lawrence. Nobody blocked the 340-pounder. Instead, forget about trying to block him. Let's just read him. He took the back. Saying to Rozier to hold on to it, and he picks up some very positive yards. That's 16 of them. Longest play for Miami tonight. From the pocket, Rozier, a downfield shot, looping ball, and on the edge, no flag. Mike Harley, the true freshman, defended by Ryan Carter. You can get away with this. Now, in super slow-mo, you might think it's interference. Watch the arm bar, 31, Carter. Watch how he uses that right arm to wall him off into the boundary. The referee's not going to call that. That's a good job, and in real time, it's, it's, it's much harder to see. But that is an arm bar, and he pushes him into the boundary, eliminates that space for the receiver to make a catch. Clemson last year led the nation in pass interference and defensive holding penalties. They worked hard on it. They made those DBs wear boxing gloves in camp so they couldn't grab the jersey. Much better technique that time. That was beautiful. And they've really cut down on those calls in 2017. Homer, chased by Wilkins, gets away and lowers the shoulder and dives for six before... Van Smith knocked him down, third and manageable for the Canes. Clemson sideline reacting. I think they felt that St. Louis had actually held Austin Bryant. 78, that right tackle, he actually did grab onto him, but it allowed Homer to get to the corner and give him a chance here where it's third and manageable. Watch at the top of your screen, seven and orange. Right there, he grabs a hold of him, and that's what got Homer in the corner. Should have been called. Miami trying to create something here, a spark of the opening possession of the third quarter, needing four on third down. Tigers crowding the line. Rogier sidesteps, and that will be brought down by Dexter Lawrence, the 340-pound sophomore. 
This is what movement can do to an offensive line. He's lined up here, but instead of working here, he comes there. Creates some confusion and doubt. Left guard Darling thought that Gauthier would pick him up, but nobody picks him up. And look at the big fella closing in on him at 340 pounds. Yeah, rare combination of power and speed. The guy's been playing through a foot injury all season long. This is McLeod trying to get loose. Cuts it back into the secondary. Ray Ray bouncing off people. A flag comes in late in the return as he's knocked down across the 40. This figures to cost Clemson good field position. During the return, personal foul, face mask, number 30, deep kicking team, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. So the penalty on Miami, and Clemson will begin in hurricane territory after the face mask. I don't know if wow, they did that. That's not a face mask. No. They grabbed him in the front of the jersey. Yeah. Not a reviewable play, but an incorrect call by this all-star ACC crew. Clemson set up at the Miami 44. For the Tigers, after the 19-yard return of the 15-yard penalty, trying to stretch their lead, setting up for the Miami 44. Beaster. With a muscle for about seven. Take a look at the face mask that was called on Chad Thomas, number nine here. He hits the face mask and comes off of it. Dave Kataya is up here to help us out. Dave, what, do you, what, do you, what, what about when you hit a face mask like that? There's two players that could do that, the runner and against the runner on contact to the face. There was no grab. If so in your view, no call there. They flip it out to Amari Rogers on the edge, and the true freshman shows his quickness, and they move the six, Dave. Yeah, no call there because it looks like a face mask. So you slow it down. He brushes it. It's not a blow. Therefore, against the runner, it's perfectly legal. Where he grabs is the shoulder pad under the face mask. And not reviewable. Correct. Comes in playing quickly here. Play action. Bryant pump fakes, retreats, and now just chucks it into the bench. Did the ball even get back to the line of scrimmage? Jaquan Johnson on the safety blitz, and it was Cleveland Farrell, the defensive end, who made the big catch. Yeah, ja Jaquan Johnson blitzes, and what prevented him from throwing it was the defensive end with that blitz. Joe Jackson ends up dropping out into the flat because he wanted to throw the ball to Richard. Took that away, and he was able to get outside of the pocket and just throw it, throw it away. Barely outside the pocket. Barely. The ball didn't reach the line of scrimmage. Yeah. There's a slant. Deion Kane makes the catch in heavy traffic. And sets up a third and four now. Kind of a quiet night for Deion Kane. Just his second reception. Yeah, Deion Kane's a guy, Kirk, that has more catches than last year, but a lot fewer yards and fewer touchdowns. And he plays that infamous X position into the boundary where Nuke Hopkins has played that over the years. Uh, Martavius Bryant, Mike Williams last year. That is a big play position. They count on big plays downfield from that spot. that Diaz chooses to do. Now, they don't pressure him. It's only a three-man rush. They spy the quarterback who's trying to make a whole bunch of guys miss. He can't, and he's swarmed for his sack. Amari Carter and Jaquan Johnson got there from the secondary. Yeah, and they spied with Amari Carter. Watch him. He's down in three-point stance, but he's just kind of sitting down there disguising what his role is, which is in case Bryant does that, he's right there to take him out. It's a good call by Manny Diaz to use him, and then they leverage the football with a safety Johnson. Field goals have been a problem. Alex Spence is long this year. is 30 yards. In fact, beyond 30, he's one for six. This is right in the area where Dabo wasn't thinking about trying to field goal. you got to be alert for a fake here. We need nine yards. Spence. This would be a big moment for him. Drives it. And makes it from 46. A smile from Dabo. That department has been a nightmare for this team. Greg Hugel, the regular kicker, injured in practice. Spence tried to fill in. He's been so inconsistent in games. Dabo says now he makes him in practice. And but Dabo's son, Will Sweeney, holding the ball. That's the best kick of his life. Oh, my Just God. Yep, right there. <laughs> hey, when it's your night, it's your night. 
Exactly. The ultra-reliable Miami kicker misses his attempt. Yeah. And the shaky Clemson guy knocks his through from 46. And I'm glad we talked to Dabo about, you know, where, where, where are you going to draw the line? You know, unless it's a game's on the line. Where is it? He said 30-yard line. We can decide that 30. I didn't believe him, though. I really didn't. <laughs> he just gave him a shot. He said he makes them in practice. Thomas. Bouncing off, guys. And he's down at the 27. From the pocket, Rogier looks downfield and delivers his best throw. Thomas getting free, lost the football, and the Tigers have it. Dorian or Daniel fell on the football, and the troubles continue for the Canes. Ryan Carter, who is beaten on the play, soft coverage. He's the veteran back there, undersized, 31. But watch what he does. He gets beaten, he gets turned, but he doesn't give up on it. Watch his hand get in there like most defensive backs are taught. Get your hand on the football and knock it out. He's going to give up some yards. Instead of just pushing him out of bounds, he gets his hand right to that football, and there's his teammate O'Daniel picking it up for another Miami turnover. Yeah, that's the first tonight for Miami. Only the fourth lost fumble all season long for the Canes. Just when Rogier finally generates something downfield, Thomas has the ball knocked free. And this comes in offense again, takes over in Miami territory. They have lived in plus territory tonight. Again, with a, a sudden change like this with a big lead, not shocking at all. Anytime it? they try to go downfield, yeah. Deion Canes at the top. Now Renfro goes back to work, finds a little open area, and makes a catch to the 40. I, I thought Manny Diaz made a good point this week. One of the things he really admires about Clemson and Kelly Bryant is how patient they are. They, they, they kind of just pick at, at your secondary and your linebackers. They just take what the defense gives you, and that's a credit to Kelly Bryant, his vision and his decision-making. There's a pump fake, now flips it back to Choice on the screen. Choice accelerates, barrels down inside the 30. Let's go to Tom Rinaldi. Chris, there's no disputing all the attention the turnover chain has received on Clemson's side. They simply said, according to Dabo Sweeney, we're not that fancy. We just give each other a high five. But Sweeney pointed out we've scored more points off turnovers this season than Miami has. That's proven to be key so far. Feaster goes in motion. They flip it to him. And Tavian Feaster knocked down near the 10. Just, relen just relentless, Chris, with how they stretch you in so many different ways and what that does is it makes a defense have to be accountable and have to be aware and have to respect that perimeter whether it's a quick throw or it's a jet sweep to the outside then you go back to the inside and you run the ball then you go play action and it's just it's a really good job of mixing up a lot of different looks the cloud in motion again they fake it to him and hand it to Feaster who's hit right at the line make a good point different skill set for Bryant right but the, the astute adjustments the play calling by Scott and Elliott to use the personnel they have on this team yeah yeah it's a different way of attacking you don't have Jordan Leggett you don't have Mike Williams of course you don't have Deshaun Watson and yet if you look at the numbers and how many yards there's uh, how many yards they have the points it's right back where you'd expect them to be and they spread the ball around as you said Bryant completing the ball to 10 different receivers tonight Need a yard on third down. Long yard. And Feaster breaks free and scores. And the Tigers headed back to the college football playoff. Just reading Chad Thomas off the edge. Stays a little wide. It's a give, read, and then physical running by Feaster. Remember, they're rotating three and four different backs in there while this defense from Miami has had to defend up to 58 plays because you're going up against Feaster and ETN and Fuller and Choice they're fresh and running hard a relentless wave of fresh tailbacks ETN has a touchdown Choice has a touchdown Feaster has a touchdown Bryant's run for a touchdown and the Tigers Putting their big paw print on another ACC championship game. Lead at 31 nothing. Clemson has stretched the lead. Getting the offense cranked up. Their first touchdown since they had 
scored in their first three possessions. Spreading the wealth around. A deep team that arrives in the postseason. Not only with a bunch of experience and a championship pedigree, but much fresher. Much fresher at running back, at receiver, and on the offensive line. They play eight offensive line. Yeah. Yeah, I think they played 25 guys that play 10 snaps or more on the offensive side alone. Even our guy Brent Venables has been coaxed into using more guys on defense because the DC always wants to keep the starters out there as much as he can, right? Thomas from the three. This time returns it to the left side. And he'll be knocked down across the 21. Yeah, Dallas in the Wildcat for Miami. Takes a look. He's a high school quarterback, by the way. Dances for a short gain as Mark Rick desperate to get anything going. Looks to a wrinkle here. Emerson was ready for it, though. Yeah, anything that they can try to do right now. Obviously a different approach, different look for Mark Rick when you put... Do it again, and Regier was at the boundary, and this time a quick burst by D.J. Dallas, who was a receiver, pressed into running back duty when Walton got injured. Nice game. As you said, high school quarterback, wide receiver, and when he first got here, they had to move him over to tailback, so very familiar, knows what to do with the ball in his hands. Three straight plays, and this is, this is working. You know, Miami fans say, where was this a little earlier, Coach yeah. Rick? We like this wrinkle. Instead of a wrinkle, you just keep going with it. Now the Rozier gets back into the lineup and actually lines up out at wide receiver. He moves from the left side to the right side. Fourth consecutive play with Dallas in the Wildcat. They bring Pager in motion. It Flip it to Rozier to Flea Flicker. Looking downfield. Barrios lays out. Can't get it. You know, the Tigers were all over it. He wasn't running free. Miami did all that stuff to get a deep shot. And the quarterback did what they coached him not to do. Couldn't, couldn't put the ball in play. Yeah, just, just, just misconnecting here. Great effort by Berrios. I thought we might see more of this stuff early in the game, frankly. They didn't well, have the ball a lot. No, and the game got out of hand pretty quickly. But I thought they, they, they might 14. go to some gadgets in the first half. Yeah. I think as things got out of control, maybe there's some of those gadgets got put on the back burner. And they need four yards here. As you're back at quarterback. And again, bad down and intercepted. Running is Kendall Joseph. Finally tackled by the quarterback, but another Miami turnover. The third in the half. It was deflected up front by Lawrence and picked off by Joseph. Boy, Dexter Lawrence is having a football game. We've talked so much about Christian Wilkins, but it's the same approach. The big fella right here kind of works his way to the outside, and instead of getting to the quarterback, he takes a peek, works right there, little stunt, and then gets up right there at 6'4". And just like we saw in the last couple possessions, a Clemson defender in the right spot. Great deflection. Kendall Joseph with his eyes on the football. Showing some athletic ability to be able to make that interception. And look at Brent Venables. Got to be so excited with the way his defense is playing right now. The last three Miami pass players have resulted in turnovers. The fumble by Thomas and now two interceptions. And the Tigers set up at the 13. Looking to stretch the lead before even the end of the third quarter. Hurricane defensive coaches. Diaz trying to get their guys' attention here. Fuller loses the ball and the Canes instead of scooping it up and running with it knock each other off of it they do but they never had to signal Clemson possession it's been yeah. that kind of a night yeah I think Sean Pollard number 76 got on it and the ball at first you're thinking Miami are they going to try to scoop and score then you're thinking okay somebody's got to try to at least get on top of the football this ball's on the ground. You see three white jerseys all over it. Johnson, the safety, the middle linebacker. Pinkney, Pinkney just ripped it out. Uh, yeah, 56 is there. They're fighting over it. Looks like Pinkney has it, 56, but the ball just stayed loose. And eventually it's Sean Pollard, the right tackle, who ends up pouncing on the ball. Second time tonight, they've not been able to recover a fumble. They could have had it. Now Kane ends up touchdown. yards and Kelly Bryant filling those big shoes different style but executing every bit as well as the 
Deshaun Watson did in these ACC championship games. And that's the risk you take when you leave your corners on islands against Deion Kane and against these wide receivers on the perimeter. Eventually, Kelly Bryant's going to try to take a peek and take a shot downfield. And it's exactly what he did after they were fortunate to pick up the fumble. Deion Kane just got isolated one on one with Malik Young. Undersized corner, but it's the, it's, it's the matchup that's right out here. But I want you to watch the little move, the little move to the inside right there. And now Malik Young is done. And now it's just a matter of putting it up and giving Deion Kane a chance. But it was off the ball where Deion Kane made that move on Malik Young. Well, they knew that against a team as good as Clemson, Miami had to take all their opportunities, make all the plays, a little luck. The inability of Diaz's defense to recover a fumble that they should have had for the second time results in a Clemson touchdown. DJ Dallas will take a knee. So three Miami turnovers in the second half have doomed them. Rogier going to be sacked. They are just going backwards now. Clemson hungry. Backups in there just swarming. That's Albert Huggins, one of those backup tackles. You know, Brian is a guy that has a great perspective. A part of the calm as a player, Kirk, he, he tells us, it comes from what he went through as a young guy. He's battled Crohn's disease since his freshman year of high school. Had a serious health scare. He was vomiting blood and had to have emergency surgery. A second operation in the spring and summer before his senior year of high school. Lost 50 pounds in the hospital. Had to use a walker. Clemson didn't back off on their offer to him. And we're glad think about think, that. Think about that for a yeah. second. In your, before your senior year. Yeah. That, that's crunch time for a lot of guys. I mean, that, that's where it's all in front of you, all your dreams, and to go through that. He's talked about the fact that he, he had to wear a colostomy bag. He, he had to put it underneath the tux going to prom, and he had to wear it through spring practice. Now, the coaches let him go out and throw. He couldn't take contact, but imagine that going through that. Coming back having a senior year, and now stepping in and quarterbacking Clemson to an ACC and championship. And imagine Clemson sticking with him yep. through all that. They don't make many wrong moves. The end of three in Charlotte. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. It's all Tigers here. Christian Wilkins singing along to God Bless America after the end of the third quarter. Hit the high note, big fella. Hey, when you're up 38 to nothing, you're down there having a little bit of fun. And you see the second unit, most of the second unit defense. And keep in mind, there's still a shutout for Miami. And this first team defense takes a lot of pride in how this second unit goes into the game. You and I called a game earlier this year, another one of these games where, so... What else do you want to talk about we'll here? Talk show in the fourth quarter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we know that well. And we, we just marveled at Wilkins, how he keeps the helmet on. He's talking to the guys on the, on the field. And I think it was the game against Virginia Tech on the road in Blacksburg. And they take as much pride in that, that second unit doing well as they do themselves. I'd love to see that. Beagles has been busy tonight and a little bit erratic. And now they put Amari Rogers. Young guys from Tennessee comes up, makes the fair catch. We saw the cut in of you, your son's game. Mari comes from Tennessee area. Right. Well, the score here not yet as bad as it was the last time these two teams met in October of 2015. Clemson players felt that Miami had talked a little trash before the game. They went out and dropped the bomb on him. This is a low point. This was the worst loss in Miami history. Kelly Bryant off the bench had a touchdown. Brashear threw a couple of interceptions. And that was the game that Al Golden was fired soon after. The Miami legends were in outrage on Twitter. Their fans were brawling. There's a change of quarterback, by the way. They brought in backup. Now we're going to get a look at Hunter Johnson, who's the true freshman. Who battled Brian and Zara Cooper, you know, briefly for the job. Brian obviously winning it out, but Johnson's gotten gotten a look at plenty of games as Clemson's won some, some lopsided games. To circle back to that loss, this is this is nothing like that no, Miami no. team that got routed, but new regime trying to build the program up. Rogers collects it and is dropped at the 31. This is kind of part of that growing process. It's kind of part of what Mark Rick has to experience with this group. 
mean, they're going to continue to recruit, continue to build. Got a taste of this this year. Had a heck, heck of a run. Uh, they're recruiting nonstop, and they're recruiting this week. And, and Mark Brick's going to get home to South Florida about 4 o'clock in the morning with the charter. Take a shower. Go, go to the airport. He's going to be on a plane to Las Vegas to try to cement one of the guys who's been verbally committed to Miami already. But that's what you do. The early signing period of December 20, a new wrinkle this year for recruiters is, is off the ante. Off the edge. Leonard Johnson spun around and sacked by Michael Jackson, the corner blitz for the Canes. And I think that's, you got, a, you got a young quarterback and Gaten's out of reach right now. Jackson came and it's just a side adjust. When you have a corner blitz, the receiver just turns and expects the ball. And young Hunter Johnson, you just you see his eyes to the right. Receiver there to the left, anticipating getting that football, and it just never came. Ran into the quarterback, it appeared to have hurt his left shoulder. Jackson being looked at briefly by the trainers on that sidelines. The Tigers will punt. Yeah, recruiting. Feeding the pipeline, it never stops. Clemson's coaches on the road weren't even at the walkthrough here yesterday because they're out trying to sign the next wave. Short punt, Arias rushes up to take it at the 43. 12 42 to go. We're going to talk playoff and big picture ahead in this final four. Good. There's a throw to the edge. Barrios. And his home state has just not had the kind of night that he'd hoped to have. He was well guarded by the Tigers early, just able to create very little beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and think, think of the big games they had a couple weeks ago, Virginia Tech and, and Notre Dame. He was he was a big play guy and, an, and really a, a guy that helped provide a spark for their offense. We thought we might see more of that, especially with Richards not in there and Herndon not in there. Short game for DJ Dallas. I don't know if you have Herndon in, if you have Richards in, if you have Walton in. It's hypothetical. We'll never know the answer. But the way Clemson has executed offensively tonight and been so strong in the trenches, would it have made any difference? But I, I think it's worth saying, for a team that's still rebuilding, you take your three best offensive players off your lineup. That's a that's a oh, big God. hit. I don't know. I, I mean, with with the quarterback play they have right now, I don't think it would have probably mattered. But, but still, that's a big hit, especially for this team. You know, Clemson loses three great players. They've got a, you know, they've got another seven or eight or nine to, to go to. Mm -hmm. Miami doesn't have that. Now, as you said, though, recruiting well, building depth. I think you're going to see subsequent Kane teams under Mark Rick have a lot more oh, yeah. talent and depth than this one does. Dallas works free. DJ Dallas. First down at the 37 yard line in Miami. I would love to get that goose egg off the board. That 58 nothing we showed you a couple of years ago, which was the low point, the home loss, Golden's final game. This has been a much different kind of a game, a more competitive Miami team. But they, they would love to get the get the ball in the end zone. Finally, break that. Well, and they're trying to get the ball, scared. get the ball in the end zone. And Clemson's trying to take pride in having a shutout here. Gier looking over the middle. Barrios has got it down at the 15, and the Gaines are in the red zone. First time tonight. Let's take a look at Rocket, the camera Rocket here. He works into the middle of this defense. Gives you a different perspective there. You see the quarterback and the offense coming at you. And another play made on the far side by Barrios, who's wrestled down inside the 10. Gets up kind of limping. They came in down a few men with injuries, and they've had guys nicked up almost from the first series, mostly on the defensive side. And Berrios struggling. He'll uh, apparently stay in the game. He is not looking 100%. He's in the right slot, second and four. Clemson fans making noise here. Homer around left end. Knocked down short of the marker. The, the Tigers band, which is down there. The, the fans in that end zone, they're also trying to join in in this defense and protect this shutout. Third and one. Homer. 
Picks his way. Knocked down right near the line. He's right on that line, isn't he? Oh, they're coming out to kick a field goal. Wow. They only, they only need half a yard. You think that shutout doesn't mean something? I, I got to tell you, you got to be kidding me. Badgley, who could inch closer to Miami's career scoring record, he can get within two points of Bertha's record. He converts from 22. And Miami on the board with a three spot. <laughs> I don't know, Mark Rick. I mean, they needed about a half yard on fourth down. I, I'm the kicker for a chip shot. I, I was pretty surprised by that. Shows you how badly did not want to get shut out. Cornell Powell taking a turn, a kick return for Clemson. And he's knocked down at the 25. It's six on the board. Final minute here, Mr. Herb Street in Charlotte. When you're talking about Tupac, I know it's time to turn out the lights. I just. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cassidy will be along with the Ford wrap up show right after the game. She'll update those of you clinging with us here what's going on in Indy. And the playoff discussion that will begin, I'm sure you'll be on Sports Center. We'll, we'll kick it around after that. Clemson. Going to claim another ACC crown. And the defending champs will be very difficult oh. to dethrone in the playoff. They're going to get him. They're going to get him. Bryant and Farrell, two big defensive ends. And he's got the nice white sweatshirt on, too. This is going to look good. Oh, yeah, you got him. Oh, Wilkins is going to get in on it, too. Oh, you got a good shot here. Go for it, guys. Right now. Go get your break. Go get your break. Go Coach get it. Quick. Hurry. Go get it. Before he starts jogging. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. They got him real good. <laughs> Gatorade bath. A whole lot of big hugs. And Davo Sweeney. And Sony Mark Rick. Two guys that have a lot in common. They are just decent to the core. Mark Davos Man. team way too good. Mark Frick saying you got a great team. One of these, maybe one of these days we'll catch up to you. Now Dabo freshly doused that nice wet white sweatshirt colored orange now as we send it down to Tom Rinaldi. Dabo I have a feeling you don't mind that dousing and you like the color orange too. After you lose an iconic quarterback three quarters of your offensive production from a season ago you win another conference title. How do you do it. Well, good Lord, you know, that's all I can tell you. The God, God has blessed me to be with a place like Clemson with a bunch of great young men that believe and buy in and show up, a great staff. And it's just a blessing. You know, 29 years since we've won it three times in a row. And, you know, we've talked, let's go win that triple crown, man. And, uh, you know, to, to see these guys today kind of in that final leg of, of what we talked about for the ACC, uh, just... Man, they finished strong today, and I'm really proud of them. Uh, the great to see the turnovers on the Clemson side. And uh, but let me tell you, hats off to Miami. You know, I thank the world of Coach Rick and what a what a what a job they've done this year. You know, it was just our time tonight, and um, we're gonna celebrate and enjoy this one. We talked earlier this week, just six scholarship seniors on this roster. What did they prove to you tonight through the journey of this season? Well, this was their 50th win which is an ACC record. That's the most wins forever for an ACC senior class. And they're just a bunch of funky old dogs, you know? I mean, Ryan Carter, Greenlee, Crowder, Maverick Morris, Ma Marcus Edmond. Nobody knows who them guys are. But, man, they're some ballers. They are some ballers. Some 31. How about Ryan Carter tonight? One-star recruit. And, I mean, he was unbelievable tonight. So, hey, I'm so happy for those seniors. Three ACC championships, three playoffs in a row, and uh, and their 50th career win. Uh, just incredible. Uh, proud of them. Finally, you said when you got here, you wanted most to build a standard, a standard of consistency. What are you building? Exactly that. You know, we're, we're a program that feels like they got a chance every year. But the biggest thing is, you know, you got to think the right way. And these we got a bunch of young people that just choose to think the right way. They truly believe week in and week out. And they focus on themselves. It's an inside focus. You got to win on the inside before you ever blossom and win on the outside. 
and that's the epitome in the heart of our team shining through tonight. Congratulations. Go get dry, Dabo. Thank you. God bless. No party necessary. This is get business as usual for Clemson. Next stop is the Superdome as the almost certain top seed in the college football playoff. Who can dethrone this team? 38-3, Clemson over Miami. Our game was produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley. We appreciate the hard work of everyone here in the booth and our entire crew. We enjoy being with you all week or all year long here on ABC and ESPN. We'll see it in the semifinals on New Year's Day. The postgame ceremony up on ESPN3 for a wrap-up right now with Cassidy Hubbard.